everybody welcome back to part 14 of the uh, flower class corvette build this is the revel 144 scale kit and in this video we're just going to be doing a little bit of work it's going to be a short video i think because all i'm going to be able to do this week is the platform here for the two pounder pom-pom gun it just goes on the after superstructure uh, just above this skylight arrangement it's a combination, as usual, of Revel uh, plastic parts and quite a bit of Pontos etched brass. So we'll uh, bring the camera over, have a look at the Pontos instructions and make a start on the assembly. OK, so here we have the Pontos instructions. This is page 8 and the description of building this two-pounder gun platform. You can see that there's uh, one main Revel part which is the whole platform and the splinter shield combined. The red markings on the Pontos instructions are the areas of plastic that need to be removed and actually I've already gone ahead and done that. I've taken the Revel plastic and used a burr to remove all of this material. It's a process that I did last week so I didn't want to repeat myself. This part's all been cleaned up. The remainder is all this etched brass work here for the underside, the support structure and also the splinter shield is completely replaced and we've also got this little housing at the back of the platform uh, to install as well. So the first job that we're going to tackle is to cut the brass out for this support structure and we'll probably be doing quite a bit of soldering in this episode so We'll get the parts cut out and let's see how it goes together. I will be soldering a lot of these parts. The first step is to fold the brass over on itself. I just need the longer pliers for this because the end of the brass where it's very thin, the pointed end, is uh, not wanting to go with the rest so we've just got to make sure that that's going to fold over properly and I'll just be tacking this at the bottom with some solder so I'll just get some flux in there as well just before we make the final bend over just flatten that down These parts don't need an awful lot of solder, that just holds it, the little application at the bottom. So get the fold started, some flux on the bottom. I just want to be careful not to get any flux bridging this slot on the underside because there's a chance if I do that, if I do get some flux filling that gap, that the solder will flow into the gap and block it. And we need that slot to fix these two parts together. And these two parts hopefully should slot together if we've not got any solder in the way. So that's a good fit to the underside. I'm not actually going to glue those together or solder them. By the time we've glued those to the underside of the platform they'll be quite secure enough so I'm just going to leave that as it is. We have a few uh, parts to fit on the underside. There's sort of a flange arrangement on the underside of these. Uh, and I think I will try and solder those. And these are parts which are all separately numbered. So we assume that they're different lengths or different sizes. These strips 
fit onto the edges of these wings. So I've already done this one here. You can just see how it forms around the shape of the wing. And the best I can do with these is just to tack solder them at either end. And that's usually enough just to hold them in position. The difficult thing with them is to get them in the correct position because they're quite small obviously and it's difficult to get them uh, in position on this very thin brass. The first thing to do is to bend the part. It's not a straightforward uh, angle. This first one's a 90 degrees like that. But then there's a slight kink a little bit further up. So the shape is something like that. And that just mirrors the shape of this wing. I've overbent the top part a little bit there. But it'll straighten out. So it goes like that. And the difficult thing, as I said, is to get them into position such that you can get some solder onto them. Got a tiny bit of flux on either end. I'm not going to be going all the way along these. So let's see if we can get this on and get it to hold. And when we've got it in position, just get some solder on as quickly as you can. A little bit more at the top. And that's enough just to hold that in place. Got a little bit too much on the bottom there, but it'll sand off. They've gone all right. So this is the replacement splinter shield. It's a little bit different to the forward gun platform where the brass that I used there formed into a ring and I soldered it at the other end. But with this, it doesn't meet up. There's this extension platform at the back that interrupts the shield. So this is just going to be glued onto the Revel plastic around the edge. Because this is brass, it's very springy. And you could actually force that to glue around. But that's not a good idea because it will spring off. It puts the glue under tension. There's quite a lot of tension at that far end. So I want to anneal this, which will soften the brass. It'll take the springiness out of the brass and it'll also help it to conform to the shape that we want. So if we get this right, there won't be any uh, tension on the part as it's glued to the plastic platform and it's not going to put the glue under any pressure. So that part does need to be annealed. So we'll just gently go around and heat that brass up. It'll discolour. But don't worry about that. So that'll be enough. So I've got this old sponge where I can just roll this piece of brass up a little bit just start to form it into the ring shape and it doesn't matter really that this is overbent so in other words a tighter radius than you're looking for on this platform It's better to be overdoing it than not. And the important part of the bend is here, right at the end. You want these two end parts to be in a curve. So make sure that they're formed properly. You can see that 
the springiness has gone out of that altogether now and it's just much easier to work with after it's been annealed. That's a little bit long. So the way that I'm going to sort that out is just to take a tiny little bit out here I just need a little nick there just to allow that brass to tuck in. So just those couple of little cutouts there. It's just added probably a millimetre to the circumference. Let's see if that will do the job. So that's just enough to tuck that brass in. So that's a good fit now, I can glue that in place. Just tighten it up a little bit more. So if you've been following the build over the last few weeks you'll know that I've been complaining about how cold it is uh, in the north of England at the moment. but. Uh, it's difficult to have the heater on because it ruins the audio uh, but today I'm all right because I've got a massive cup of hot chocolate to warm my hands up with kindly provided by my wife so we'll just get some heat into the fingers before we put this uh, splinter shield on so to do this I just want some dots of medium super glue around the edge the medium CA is the one that I use the most of. Uh, it's got the best balance really between the speed of the cure which is about 20 seconds uh, and strength. It hangs around for long enough on the part to uh, not evaporate. Some of the thin glues it's often not possible to apply them to the part. You've got to drop them into the joint because they just evaporate. Medium super glue does hang around for long enough for you to be able to make the connection. Just to help me with this I'm going to put a couple of pieces of tape on the shield ready to wrap around because there's quite a lot to hold together. So maybe three parts so maybe three pieces of tape should do the job. I hope it'll just give us a bit of a help. So just get ready with those three bits of tape. I'm going to use some medium super glue. I want to get a good fix in here in the corners and on the end as well. So just three bits of glue at the moment. So that just gives us a little bit of support. Otherwise it's easy just to run out of fingers to get it to hold together properly. It's more or less in position. not easy doing that left-handed but I didn't let go with my right hand I'm getting there I think with this just take the piece of tape off 
at the end there. So finally I've managed to get that attached all the way around. There's a lip to go all the way around the top of this splinter shield which could be quite difficult I think. We'll see how we get on with it. Another difficult part of this assembly is this ring which fits around the top of the shield. And again I think we're going to have to glue this in stages. I'm just debating whether it's going to be possible to get a tiny bit of solder on just to hold it at the front. Obviously the soldering iron is going to get close to this plastic. So it's a bit risky doing that. But I might not have any choice with it really. If I can get a spot of solder here at the front and here at either end where it meets the opening in the platform. That might just be enough to hold it into position. So if you just get a bit of flux here at the end and a bit on the top of the shield That's actually worked pretty well. I'm confident enough to go around the perimeter of this ring now and get a bit more of the solder onto it. That'll do. I'm not going to push my luck with that. So that's uh, come out pretty well. I'm happy with that. With the ring in position, we can now bend down this bracket arrangement at the front. So we've got the front bracket folded up. I did actually break the bottom piece off, but it's glued on all right. So there's no damage done. So the next thing to do is to get the underside glued into position, the frame. And we just have to be careful here to orientate this correctly. There's a cutout here at the front, which faces in this direction and I'll just get a drop of extra thin onto that it should lock that part into place just persuade it along a little bit okay so that's fixed in position Next we have an enclosure at the back here which wraps around this extension platform. This is another job for the soldering iron I think. Get the bends done first.
we'll use a little bit of tape to help us with this. That's a fairly straightforward box to fold up and hopefully that should fit along the back of this platform extension. Now that I've got that in the position I want it I'm going to put some glue straight in there. These two boxes fit on the sides of the cabin arrangement that I've just built. The last parts to fit are these brackets. I've already done the one on this side. So it's just an angle bracket and I think it carries some rigging. There's a small hole in the top of it. And because of that, it's going to be taking a bit of strain. So I want to make sure that this is firmly attached. So I'll be soldering these parts on. Just fold the bracket first. So what I want to do is get a bit of solder onto the roof. So I'll just tin the roof to start off with. And also tin the bottom of the bracket as well. So having tinned both of those parts, the two joining surfaces, I can just add a tiny bit more flux. And we've already got solder on there, so it doesn't need any more. We can just heat the parts up and the solder that we've already put on those parts will melt and hopefully join together. Got a good fixing on there, just tidy the join up a little bit, smooth it all in. Okay, so that's the platform all finished. Well, obviously it needs priming and painting, but that's a nice strong assembly, particularly these parts at the top, which are going to hold the rigging and the flange around the top of the splinter shield. That's nice and strong as well, and these uh, little flanges at the side here on the bottom leg. So if you can solder I'd advise you to do that because that's a much stronger assembly than glue would have been. The only thing I've got to do now because I glued around the bottom to fix the shield to the plastic uh, I've filled some of these holes in and I'm going to be using this brass rod to replace the plastic revel parts which weren't very good. So I just need to drill out very gently uh, some shallow holes just to accept this rod. Uh, and again that will give a nice strong fixing when I come to uh, fix the part to the deck. So obviously I can't go too far in, I don't want to go all the way through the platform. So just a nice shallow hole underneath. We 
don't need to go too far just enough to give the glue something to bite into when we come to fit the uh, pillars I'm just going to measure some rod out for the uh, pillars so these have got to be an accurate length just to make sure that they fit down onto the deck so I'm checking each one of these against the overall height of the platform just to make sure that they are going to sit on the deck so I've checked all those pillars and I'll just attach them now with a spot of super glue we need to get them more or less vertical at this stage it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because we can adjust them when the time comes to fit this to the deck So those are the legs in position they're going to need a little bit of adjustment once we start to fit the platform to the model okay so that's the uh, platform I've primed it with some Mr Surfacer 1500 and that's ready for painting the platform fits here at the back there are a number of holes in the Revel deck and actually I'm going to fill those because uh, I'm not going to be able to get these legs in anyway so I'll just fill them in and it'll be just a neater finish. I'm not going to put any glue on the bottom of these uh, legs. They'll just rest on the deck. Something like that. So uh, that's all ready to paint now. I'll put that into storage though until uh, we're ready to do it along with the uh, four inch gun platform that we built last week. Okay so that's the pom pom bandstand built up ready to paint and fit to the model. Before I can fit it though I've got to do the work on the skylight arrangement that's on this after superstructure. That's got some doors and stuff to go on it so I'll be doing that in the next episode. In the next episode which will be part 15 I'm also going to be building the two guns, the pom-pom gun that I've just built the platform for and also the main 4-inch gun which uh, goes on this platform which I built last week in part 13. I'm also going to be doing a bit more work over the next few days on the Tamiya Mosquito, the 132 scale kit that I started last week and part 2 of that playlist will be coming up in the next few days. But part 15 of the Corvette build will be, as usual, next Friday night at 8 o'clock. So I hope you can join me for one of those upcoming videos. In the meantime, everybody, look after yourselves. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, I'm going to go inside and get my hands warmed up. Bye for now.